What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear someone mention Las Vegas? For sure, casinos and striking nightclubs, since it is known as the city of wealth, luxury, and glamour. But that's not all. Las Vegas is home to another hidden city, an underworld. On July 3, 1975, violent thunderstorms shook Las Vegas. In a matter of hours, almost a year's rainfall fell, causing serious flooding. For example, the Caesars Palace, one of the largest hotels in the world, had about 700 cars damaged and washed away by torrents of rain. Some of the cars were found miles from the parking lot. Rushing water and erosion brought down telephone poles. Wastewater treatment plants were flooded and stinky water gushed out through manholes. There were also human casualties. In the wake of this flooding, Las Vegas city officials were forced to build modern flood tunnels under the city's streets to reduce the impact of future disasters. By the 1990s, there were dozens of miles of storm sewer system built under the city. Some sections were made as wide, concrete tunnels. The entrances to these tunnels are exposed to the public, and many people consider them to be ordinary overpasses. The underground is the place that Las Vegas residents and tourists visiting the city would never want to face. The network of tunnels has been providing shelter to many people for decades, those whose needs cannot be satisfied by the ordinary world. Although the tunnels were never intended to shelter the homeless, there's enough space to accommodate many comers. They are called mole people. Mostly, they are drug addicts, people with mental disorders, criminals, disabled veterans, and working people who cannot pay their rent. But there are also those who have made such a choice on their own. What do these tunnel networks look like? How do people live in them? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Las Vegas has always had a hard time dealing with the homelessness. Since it is a tourist city, the authorities have always tried to fight the presence of homeless people on the streets. This was one of the reasons why such people chose to descend into concrete storm drains. Till a certain time, nobody disturbed these people, so the underground life developed on its own. According to various sources, the Las Vegas storm sewer system stretches for more than 250 miles wide sections that are slightly higher than human height and located near the exits to the surface have become a refuge for the homeless. It is not easy to live in the tunnels, especially since many of the conveniences we take for granted are not available here. For example, plumbing. When one resident was asked what she missed most in life, she laughed and explained a toilet and a shower. Last time I took a shower, I cried. Although some residents try to keep themselves clean and bring water in cans, hygiene here is still extremely poor due to the lack of toilets and sewage. However, plumbing is not the only thing that people living here lack. The network of tunnels is very dark. The only source of light comes from the grates, which are designed to let water flow through them during a downpour. During the summer months, temperatures in the tunnels are unbearably hot. In the ordinary world, most people stand in front of a fan or look for places with air conditioning to cool off and drink a refreshing glass of water. There's no such thing in the tunnels, and many residents suffer heat stroke. And yet, they still continue to live here. The dampness, rats, and insects, as well as the rambunctious lifestyle, make such places a breeding ground for viruses and sexually transmitted diseases. However, there are some relatively comfortable places in the tunnel network. Some people have managed to fully furnish their tunnel space with tables, mattresses, and other furniture. The most comfortable thing is trying to settle in as a couple. Here's one of the famous photos. It shows Stephen and Catherine. They had their own bed of pallets, racks of things, and even books in an area of about 430 square feet. They could be described as wealthy tunnel settlers by the standards of the time. Today, there are more and more places like this in the tunnels. The most innovative residents use high-powered batteries for lighting and household needs, set up individual toilets, and use refrigerators to keep the rats from getting to the food here, mostly. In the best case scenario, tunnel residents eat instant meals or cheap fast food. At worst, there are more people who eat from garbage cans, but there are fewer and fewer of such people now because of the rise of organizations that provide them with minimal sustenance. Overall, we can say that the lives of homeless people are slightly improving since they are noticed. The basic housing arrangement is a sign that a person has lived here for a long time and is not going anywhere. But life here can become extremely challenging and even dangerous in the event of a flood. We should say that the people living in the tunnels are well aware that they are standing on a ticking time bomb because a strong downpour can drive them out of their dwelling without any prior warning. They have only a few minutes to gather the most important things and leave the dungeon. So, deaths due to flooding are a common problem. In 2016, water gushed through the net and drowned three homeless people. 
But that's not all of the threats faced by residents. Crime and drug addiction are a frequent concern as many local residents suffer from substance abuse problems. The emergency services and the police take a long time to locate a patient in the tunnel network. Moreover, settlers do not always dare to call the authorities immediately because they are afraid of problems with the law. Here, any illegal activity is just the order of the day. The most serious crimes are quite common. No wonder that such a clandestine life eventually attracted the increased attention of the authorities to the tunnel dwellers. An increase in criminal activity has resulted in more frequent police surveillance of tunnel entrances, but they still avoid going inside the catacombs. In order to escape police custody and arrest, many residents have chosen to leave settled areas. Still, despite all the difficulties and inconveniences of such a life, various estimates suggest that between 1,000 and 2,000 people live in the Las Vegas flood tunnel network and won't leave this place. It's like a small town or a whole local civilization with its own values, living by its own unknown rules. Many people live here because of the proximity to the casinos on Las Vegas Street. The entrances to the tunnel are located near the gambling facilities. There are a lot of rich tourists there who are handing out money left and right. Homeless people go to the casinos looking for chips the players have lost, or simply begging or ravaging the slot machines of drunk and asleep tourists. Chips can always be exchanged for cash. There are also people who get retirement pay or an allowance, which is not enough for normal housing, but sufficient for settling in the tunnel and regular losses at the casino. Some homeless people work at normal jobs, for example in stores or gas stations, but they can't rent a place to live in expensive Las Vegas. Despite its isolation and the authorities' reluctance to notice such a serious problem, the tunnels still attract a lot of attention. Film and TV production crews visit these places. However, this does not mean that this place should be included in your tourist itinerary because it is still quite dangerous. The homeless living in the diversion canals do not like uninvited guests. Brian Matthew, a journalist, has spent years researching storm tunnels and interviewing their residents. In 2007, he even wrote a book called Beneath the Neon, Life and Death in the Las Vegas Tunnels. He is considered to be the first to talk about the problem and to bring the situation to light, since until that moment, many people did not even know that there are also underground Las Vegas, gloomy and not at all celebratory. Authorities and police did not spread the word about it. Brian Matthew also started a foundation, which provides all kinds of help to tunnel residents. The homeless must give up drugs and alcohol in order to receive assistance. The tunnels will continue to serve their unofficial purpose until Las Vegas city officials solve the housing problem of all those who call the tunnels home. But since government representatives have been silently turning a blind eye, they are apparently satisfied that the homeless are in the tunnels, rather than on the streets and at the casinos. Meanwhile, the canal network continues to grow, as the Las Vegas drainage system still can't deal with heavy rains. There's even no doubt that as new canals appear, homeless people will move into them as well. The problem of homelessness is not just a problem in Las Vegas. Look around you. There are such people in your city. They're just on the streets or in heating pipes in winter. Maybe it's time for the government to start dealing with the poverty problem in some way. Or maybe it's an inevitable feature of big cities. What do you think? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. And if you found this glimpse into Las Vegas' hidden underworld as fascinating as we did, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to catch more thrilling content. Don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss our future uploads. Until then, stay curious.